Hi, this is the second video for the homework on differences in proportions that I am making. This one's for sec, uh, chapter six, section nine. And it's a look at a hypothesis test involving data from a physician's health study. In the physician's health study, 22,071 male physicians participated in a study to determine whether taking a daily low-dose aspirin reduced the risk of heart attacks. The men were randomly assigned to two groups and the study was double blind. After five years, 104 of the 11,037 men taking a daily low dose aspirin had a heart attack, while 189 of the 11,034 men taking placebo had a heart attack. We want to know if taking low dose aspirin reduces the risk of heart attacks. My dog's barking, so I'm going to stop for a minute and figure out why. Okay, so first we want to state the null and alternative hypotheses. Now, since we are checking to see if the risk of heart attacks is lower in the men taking the low-dose aspirin, which is group one, we're looking to see if P1 is less than P2. That's going to be our alternative hypothesis. So here are our hypotheses. I'll submit that answer. Try that again. Submit. There we go. Okay, so there's our hypotheses. Okay, so part two. We want to give the test statistic and the p-value. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need to do some calculation. Okay, so my test statistic is going to be a z-test statistic. It's going to take the form p1 hat minus p2 hat. That's my difference in sample proportions divided by the standard error, which is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n1, plus p hat times 1 minus p hat over n2. And p hat is going to be the pooled estimate, if I combine the two samples, of um, the proportion of all men who would have heart attacks. Okay, so let's start by calculating our p1 hat, our p2 hat, our p hat, and our N1 and N2 so that we can figure out what we need to plug in here. Okay, so P1. In group 1, we had 104 out of 11,037 have heart attacks. So our P1 hat, let's see, I'm not getting any ink here. P1 hat is going to be equal to 104 over 11,037. Our P2 hat is going to be the number who had heart attacks in group 2, 189, divided by the total number of men in group 2, 11,034. Our pooled P hat, if we combine these into one group, our P hat pooled is going to be the total number of men who had heart attacks, 104 plus 189 divided by the total number of men in the study, 11,037 plus 11,034. And then our N1 is equal to 11,037 and our N2 is equal to 11,034. Okay, so now I have the pieces that I need to plug into this formula. And let's see how we do it. Okay, so I'm going to start by calculating the um, pooled p hat and then the standard, using that to get the standard error. And then once I have that, I will use it to um, find the test statistic. So let's see, for the p hat, I need 104 plus 189 divided by 11,037, whoop, 11, 
1037 plus 11,034. Okay, so there's my pooled P hat, and I'm going to store that value as X. Okay, so now to find my standard error, I'm going to take my square root of my p hat, which is x times 1 minus x divided by n1, which is 11,037, plus my x, which is my p hat, remember, times 1 minus my p hat, that I stored in x, divided by n2, which is 11,034. So that gives me my standard error. And I'm going to store that now. Call that x. Okay, so now to get my test statistic, I need to take my p1 hat minus my p2 hat and then divide it by that x. So I'm going to take my p1 hat, 104, divided by 11,037, minus my p2 hat, 189, divided by 11,034. And then I'm going to divide it by that standard error that I found. And that gives me a test statistic of negative 5.001. It says to round my answer for the test statistic to two decimal places, so that would be um, negative 5.00. Now if I want to find the p-value, I know that my test statistic, z, is negative 5.00. Since my alternative hypothesis has a less than sign in it, I know I'm looking for the area to the left of my test statistic, and that will be my p-value. So my p-value is going to be found with the normal CDF. I'm going to go from the negative infinity value up to my test statistic of negative 5.00. And this has a standard normal, so 0, 1. So second distribution, go to my normal CDF, negative 5.00. One, and that gives me 2.87 times 10 to the negative 7. So what this is equal to, let me go back here. is point one two three four five six zeros and then two eight seven. This is my p-value. So coming back into why the plus it wants me to round it says to three decimal places. So rounded to three decimal places, my p-value would be zero. 
with such a small p-value, I'm testing at the, let's see, hmm, does it tell me what the significance level I'm using? It's not telling me, but at virtually any significance level, since it's zero, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. So we'll submit our answer. And now we want to know, does taking low-dose aspirin reduce the hit risk of heart attacks? Well, my null hypothesis was rejected in favor of the alternative, that the proportion with heart attacks is lower among people taking low-dose aspirin. So, yes, it does. And the last part, can we infer a causal relationship from the results? So what this boils down to is, was this an experiment that had random assignment to treatments? Or was it an observational study? Because we know that we have a significant difference here. And if we look back, we can see that the men were randomly assigned to the groups, which means it is a randomized experiment. And so we can make a cause and effect conclusion. Because the results are significant and the results come from an experiment, we can infer a causal relationship. And that is the end of this question. Hopefully this helped you. Um, it's likely that if you're having problems that it may be related to rounding. I recommend that you just do your best with it. And if you feel that you're really doing things correctly and that it's a rounding problem, I am going to be able to take care of you all um, for a few points anyway at the end of the semester, so don't worry too much about it. The main thing is just to get used to the idea that we can test for a difference in proportions using a normal distribution. Have a good night.